Hi, Film Recapped here. Today I'm going to explain an American dystopian action horror film called The Purge. Spoilers ahead, brace yourself, and take care. At the beginning of the movie, we see several clips of people killing and assaulting each other, and houses being burned. Several shootouts and gang fights resulting in hundreds of deaths are seen. In 2014, the Republican and Democratic parties had collapsed in the U.S. An economic crisis gave rise to a third political party called the New Founding Fathers of America (NFFA). The party leader is the U.S. President Bracken. He and the others fro his party formulated an extreme law called the Purge. Every once in a year, one night, for 12 hours straight, all crimes are legal and no emergency services will be available. People are allowed to release their inhibitions in any way they choose, including murder. It is now the year 2022. Because of the purge, the United States has become virtually crime-free, and unemployment rates have dropped to 1%. It is the day of the purge. James Sandon drives back to his home in a wealthy gated community to be safe during the night. He sees his neighbors place blue flowers in their front yard to show their support to the purging system. James too has a blue flower, suggests Suggesting that he is a supporter of the purge. James is planning to spend the night locked in with his wife Mary and their children, Zoe and Charlie. Zoe is in her room with her boyfriend Henry. James is not fond of their relationship, so Henry sneaks out of the house. As Henry sneaks out, the two sees a neighbor sharpening a weapon for tonight. As Mary places the flowers in their yard, their obnoxious neighbor, Grace Ferris, approaches her with some cookies. The two talk about the lockdown happening in an hour, and go their separate ways. James's son, Charlie, is then seven playing with his creepy robotic toy, Timmy. Later that evening, the family happily has dinner together and goes to their study room to prepare for the purge. First, James turns on the surveillance camera placed around the house. Then, he turns on the security system which brings down metal doors and windows, closing every possible opening in the house. Lastly, he brings out a gun fro the safe for protection. Though the family sits down to watch the official initiation of the purge on TV, it is announced that the purge is fully in motion. Weapons of class 4 or lower are now legal. However, all other weapons are restricted. Government officials of ranking 10 or above are immune to the purge, so an attack on them is still considered illegal. After a siren blares, any and all crimes including murder will be legal for 12 continuous hours. Fire, and any other emergency medical services will be unavailable. As the broadcast completes, the siren starts to blare, indicating that the purge has now started. James tells his kids that since they can afford protection, they will be fine. Zoe then goes back to her room. Charlie, on the other hand doesn't seem to like the idea of the purge, but James tries to make him understand, saying that it allows people to take out their frustration. He too then goes to his room. Zoe hears a thud in her room and finds Henry, who had snuck in before the security system was engaged. Henry tells Zoe that he wants to talk to her father about their relationship. Since James cannot throw him out of the house during this time, he thinks it's the perfect time for him to convince her father. Everyone in the house relaxes, while Charlie plays with his robot. Timmy. He moves Timmy around the house, surveilling everything through Timmy's camera. He sends Timmy to the study room and watches the surveillance footage. He sees a man running away from someone, and stand right in front of their house. Charlie runs to watch the surveillance footage from there, and sees a man begging for help outside their house. In order to help him, Charlie disarms the metal door. At the same time, Henry makes his way towards James' room to talk to him. Realizing that Charlie has disarmed the metal door, James runs to the study room and quickly puts the metal doors down again. However, the man gets in. James, Mary, Charlie, and the man are in the room when suddenly, Henry fires at James from the stairs. He wants to kill James so he can be with Zoe. The two fire at each other and Henry gets shot. Seeing this, Zoe saves Henry and takes him away, after which James looks around to see that the strange man is gone too. To ensure his family's safety, James takes his family into a safe room and goes to look for Zoe. He finds Henry's dead body in the room. We see that the stranger is standing right behind him as he checks Henry's pulse, but James doesn't see him. Charlie sees a group of people approaching their home through the camera and calls his parents. The group is masked and has weapons in their hands. The group leader stands right in front of the camera and starts talking. He knows James's name and tells the family that one of their targets was lost. The group got to know from their neighbor that the target had run into their house. Now, the group wants the target out so that they can kill him. If the family doesn't send him out in time, they threaten to get inside the house and kill everyone, as they know a way to break in. Then, the group cuts off the power supply to the house, and everything goes black. James tells the family that they have to find the man and force him outside, but Charlie is reluctant to the idea. James and Mary goes out to search for him. Charlie too looks for him with the help of Timmy, and finds him hiding behind the sofa in the living 
living room. He blinks Timmy's light at the man and makes him follow it. Charlie is trying to help the man. He takes him to his room, where he is formed hiding in the closet. Timmy flashes his light at the hiding, and the man sees it. He finally goes inside it, after thanking Timmy. Just then, the Purger's leader calls James to the front door. The two talk through an opening, and James explains to him that they are not trying to save the stranger. The leader then shoots one of his own men to threaten James, while claiming that the group's equipment to break the door is arriving soon. James, hearing his family's safety, goes back to look for the stranger. He goes into Charlie's room and sees the stranger holding Zoe at gunpoint. As he threatens James, Mary comes behind him. James and the man get into a fight and James accidentally shoots him. He and Mary then tie the man into a chair. However, the man starts to fight back. James makes Mary poke at the stranger's wound so he could give up. Charlie watches all of this in horror. They prepare to give him to the gang, but realize that they would not be any better if they did. The stranger too offers James that he will go outside so that he can save his family. James realizes how wrong they are, and tells Mary that they will have to fight back and defend themselves. Just then, the purger's equipment to open the doors and windows arrive. They attach huge chains to the doors and pull on them, finally breaking in. James hands Charlie a gun and tells him to hide in the basement. He forgets to untie the stranger in a hurry and gets ready to fight. Zoe hides in her room, while the stranger tries to free himself. Now the purgers start to break in. One of them opens the main door for the leader, and he gets in with his gun. As they hide around the house, one purger gets in through the basement door and attacks Charlie. As he is about to kill him, James shoots the man from behind. The group maniacally roams around the house. James fights and kills most of them. But the leader appears before him and stabs him. As James lies in the ground dying, the leader politely thanks him and kisses his forehead. The others start to destroy everything in the house. Charlie is in the study room, looking at the surveillance footage, when he sees two people approach the purgers in their front yard and kill them. He notices that the people are their neighbors, Grace and her husband. Slowly, all the neighbors gather to help the Sandins, but at the same time, Mary is caught by two of the purgers. The girl purger tickles Mary as she begs for her life. Just when she is about to hit Mary with her machete, their neighbor, Mr. and Mrs. shoot the two dead. Mary goes to help James, but before they could do anything, the leader walks into the room. He cocks his gun and thanks them for their sacrifice. Zoe suddenly appears and shoots the man dead before he can kill them. The family sits around James, crying as he dies when the neighbors arrive. Mary thanks them for their help, however, it turns out that the neighbors want to kill the Sandins themselves. They are jealous of James's money and want to purge themselves of the jealousy by they then drag James's body to the other room and take the others hostage. Mary begs them to leave her kids and they tie all three of them with duct tape. The neighbors then hold each other's hand and thank the new founding fathers for providing them with this opportunity. They have always been jealous of Sandin's perfect family, and when the purgers broke into the house today, they saw the opportunity. As they are about to harm the family, the stranger from earlier saves them. He shoots Mr. Halverson dead and holds Grace at gunpoint. The neighbors now stand in a line in front of them. Grace asks Mary to kill time and put an end to this, however, Mary has had enough of these killings. She tells everyone to stay there until 7 when the purge stops. A few minutes later, everyone is sitting at the dinner table together in silence. The stranger still points his gun at the neighbors to keep them in check. Charlie and Zoe cry, while holding their father's hand. Suddenly, Grace tries to take the rifle from Mary's hand, but Mary breaks her nose instead, yelling at her. Finally, the sirens ring, indicating that the purge has completed. Mary tells everyone to get out of her house, the stranger too leaves at the end, after Mary thanks him for his help. The movie ends as the three surviving members of the family look at dead bodies lying outside the house. A voice in the background narrates that this was the most successful purge to date. Other news reporters claim that the streets of Los Angeles are filled with dead bodies, and the stock market has risen to its highest. That was my recap for the The Purge. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.